What's up guys, you already know what it is. It's your girl Taylor with the tea. It's tea time, baby. This is where all the tea really spills. So let's do a little recap. Joined my sorority, said I was studying abroad, told them multiple times. They told me there was a half lease. Turns out there wasn't. They told me four days before I was supposed to leave, I needed to find a subleaser and I did. And then they took my subleaser and gave it to another girl. Woo, now we're all caught up. <sighs> the tea is exceptionally hot this morning. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. So in sororities, there's this thing called honor board, which basically is just the head people of the sorority. So that would be the president, the vice president, VP of finance, VP of, or president of social chair or whatever. And there's like five to six people. It's basically like their little judicial system that they use. So basically, if you ever have any concerns or anything like that, you want to schedule a meeting with honor board, express your concerns, and then they will all talk about it together. And then they unanimously vote and they vote on to how to fix the situation. Okay. So I'm like, perfect. Let me schedule a meeting with honor board. Let's talk about it. So I actually had a conversation with the VP of finance first. I am hounding them. Okay. I am Facebook messaging, texting, emailing, whatever you name it, I did because I felt like I was treated unfairly. And when I feel like something unjustly is happening to me, I am not going to stop until it's justified. So I'm not getting any responses from any of these people. They're not even saying like, no, we're not going to have this meeting. They're just straight up ignoring me. The way that I see it is that they were trying to push this off as far as possible because the next time they're physically going to see me in person is first semester of senior year, which is seven months. If we just push her off for the next two days, we don't have to deal with her for seven months. We'll just bill her. You see what I'm saying? You see what they're doing? <sighs> it's my favorite part. Let's open the receipts. So I messaged the VP of the sorority. I'm basically calling her out saying, I want to schedule a meeting because I know what's going on. I know what you're doing. I know that VP of finance already asked about it, but I just don't feel like my side of the story was heard. She replies, hi, exclamation point. So VP of finance came in to discuss the situation with honor board a little while ago. And we came to a decision that I had hoped that she shared with you. At this point in the semester, we don't have any more honor board meetings set up. If you feel it's a very urgent situation, I could try to set up something with everyone, but it may be difficult to coordinate six people's schedules. Otherwise, you and I can discuss it one-on-one -on -one sometime this week, and I can relay those details to Honor Board and have some help with the situation. Do you remember what they did? I'm gonna tell you what they did. They caught wind that I caught wind that I found out that the girl that they took, my subleaser, and gave it to the girl that's suing, and they knew that I knew that. So they had themselves a little meeting to figure out how they're going to fix the situation. So they're trying to cover their tracks. So they're all having these little meetings constantly with just them two and leaving me out of it because they want to make sure that they're all on the same page, right? Oh, girl, I'm getting all hot and heated. So I respond to the VP and say, <laughs> VP of finance did tell me what the decision was. I just feel like the decision was made unfairly due to the fact that I was not included in the process. So let's talk about this for a second. You have these honor board meetings to make it fair, right? And so you can hear everybody's sides. So you can understand things that maybe weren't said in the beginning, right? But you want to disinclude me out of the meeting that I requested to have regarding my fees and my lease. You don't want to have a meeting because it's really complicated to have six people all in the same room. It's so complicated. Let me continue with this message. I said, I'm still having a hard time understanding how the decision was made because I was under the impression that if I found someone who could take my spot, parentheses, which I did, and I named the girl, then I would not have to pay live-in fees. And with studying abroad, I now have to come up with an additional $2,000 that I do not have. I am paying for my own education and the sorority on my own. So it's just really stressful when something like this happens, especially when I was the one who asked the girl to take my spot and initiated her to break her lease. I just really feel like it's unfair to me and I hope that there is a way where the decision can be changed. At this point in time, 
I did not think that it was going to get as big as it ended up getting, okay? Fasten your seatbelts. So I leave. I end up moving out without an answer. I go to Spain. I'm in Spain. Everything is just dandy. I kind of forget about the situation a little bit. Anybody that went to college knows that halfway through your semester, you have to start planning for the semester after that. And you get a certain time frame to pick your classes, okay? And it's very hectic because classes fill up really quickly and then you have to find something else that fills that credit. You, you guys know the gist. I'm trying to sign up for classes, I'm trying to see, and I notice that my account is blocked, that I'm not allowed to sign up for classes. I go to check my bill and I see that my sorority charged me live-in fees. Here's the problem with this. How it works is that the sorority is allowed to charge your university billing, okay? Sorority university billing. Everything that goes on your university billing is normally tuition. So it's anything that has to do with your classes, maybe your scholarships, everything gets applied to this, but it's your tuition. Why they are allowed to incorporate an extracurricular into your tuition is beyond me. It is beyond me because they're two separate things. And so now I'm blocked from getting an education because they want to mesh the two together. Now it's not just oh, we disagree with you, you need to pay these fees. Now it's, if you don't pay these fees, you're not going to class, you're not getting an education. The bigger issue with this is that I was writing on scholarships. I'm paying my own way through college at this point, right? I'm taking out loans and stuff. Where this money is coming from, where they expect me to get it from is beyond me. I'm starting to see the problems before they're even happening. How am I gonna get in contact with these people? I have an international phone number, okay? I, I, I can't, they can't call me, I can only call them. I start to let my emotions get the better of me. I've worked so hard to get to the point to where I'm at just for it to be ripped away from me for something that I didn't do wrong. I finally get a hold of the financial department and I explain to them my situation. Financial department was a real asshole. He's like, listen, honey, you shouldn't have signed up for the sorority if, if you couldn't afford it. And that's really not my problem at this point. Now comes the time where I'm supposed to sign up for classes. I can't. I call back the financial department, basically begging them to let me sign up for classes. Please, can you just defer the payments? I am in a dispute with my sorority over this. And I physically do not have the money to pay this to make it go away and then dispute it later. By the grace of God, they let me sign up for classes. Now, without saying exact numbers, the amount that they were trying to bill me for was roughly $3,500 around there, $3,000, $4,000 that they were trying to bill me. At this point, I'm like, I need to speak to somebody. I need to speak to a higher official. I need to gather my evidence. So I start screenshotting everything, everything. I contact somebody that I trust in the sorority and I'm like, hey, is there anybody that I can contact that's higher than the president. And she goes, you should go to the national. This is where the national representative comes in. The national is a national representative of the sorority. They usually come in when the sorority's in trouble or somebody's not following the rules. And they basically make sure that everybody's like in line. They're basically the mom of the situation. We are gonna call her Karen. I could sit here and read all the receipts that I have. I really could but this would turn into a six part series, okay? I'm just gonna give you the gist of what happened. I contact Karen and I explain to her the situation. Hi, my name is Taylor Nicole Lemus. I've been in this sorority for so and so long and this has happened to me. They wouldn't let me schedule a meeting, blah, blah, blah. What I didn't realize is that the VP of finance, the VP and the president already had a conversation with her way back when and explained the situation to make me look like the bad guy. So the national comes back to me and said, nope, decision's already made, sorry, not gonna happen. I'm like realizing that I, this is an ongoing problem and it's not gonna go away. So I start contacting people. Like who is it that I can contact that's above the national because the national isn't listening to me either. They go, well, you need to contact basically the headquarters of the sorority. I send email after email after email after email and nobody is responding to me. When I did finally get a response back, 
from the head people, their response to me was, well, we would need to talk to your national and your president and your VP and everybody that was involved first before we even kind of like talk to you. I was like, so you need to talk to the people that have that don't even want to listen to me first before anybody decides to listen to me. I start emailing these people like crazy. I am at such a level of pissed off that cannot be matched. I start emailing people from the sorority that aren't even really involved just to let them know what's going on. So it's talked about at the house. And I just keep getting the same response over and over again. Our decision was made, our decision was made, our decision was made. So I'm sending all these emails to the headquarters and I wouldn't stop. And I sent this really long essay to the headquarters of the sorority basically using everything they stand for against them. And I said, you say you stand for sisterhood, but this isn't sisterly. You said that you stand for respect and justice and being honest, and I'm not being treated that way at all. So let me explain to you what's been happening to me. Well, you're going to listen to me or I'm not going to stop. So I get contacted by the national rep, okay? Karen, quotes. Hi Taylor, my name is Karen and I am the national rep for the chapter that, of your sorority. I wanted to reach out to you concerning your housing situation. Lovely. Becky contacted us on our board basically at the start of the semester when she had decided to drop slash move out of the house. I told her that she would be responsible to pay live-in rates for the remainder of the semester, but if that someone could take her spot in the house, she would not have to pay for the second semester. Keep that in mind. Remember that. Remember she said that. Soon after, the girl that I found and I recruited inquired about living in the house and we told her there was a room. It was not up to the girl that you found to decide whose spot she was going to fill. We base it chronologically off the fact that we committed to Becky first. So let's recap. What she's saying is that the, how they do things when people drop slash move out or whatever is that you have to find a subleaser, which I did. But she's saying because the subleaser, the girl that I found, contacted them and said, hey, I want to live in. They, they took that girl and said, oh, well, we committed to Becky, the one that wanted to leave. We committed to her. We told her she found somebody. She finishes with, there wasn't really a gray area since Becky had been out of the house for almost an entire semester before we were even made aware of your plans. Oh, really? Because I have a Facebook message that I sent to the VP of Finance eight to nine months before Becky even made arrangements that she wanted to leave. But let's continue reading. I'm truly sorry if you felt you weren't included in this decision. Please let me know if you have any questions. And again, I'm sorry for the confusion and added stress. <laughs> so I sent Karen a message back. Quote, hi, Karen. Okay, I completely understand, but I just feel like I have been given the short end of the stick in this entire situation. Last year when I was being recruited, I was told that there were half leases, which was true that year, but they stopped doing that this year due to the fact that live-in attendance was low parentheses, this is what I was told. In the very beginning of this year, I told the VP of finance that I will be studying abroad and needed to know what the financial situation will be. This is when she told me that half leases were no longer a thing, which came as a surprise to me. But she told me that if I was able to find someone to take my spot, I would, I would not have to pay any fees. This is when I found the girl that you took and gave to Becky. I went out of my way and asked her to fill my spots, which is when she inquired to you. This is why I'm upset because I found someone to fill my spot and Becky is now benefiting from my work. This isn't fair. I still have the text message conversation from the girl that I found about us inquiring about her living in. I felt it would not only benefit me, but the girl that I also found as my subleaser because she was left out during recruitment. T, the girls were mean. I knew this would be a great opportunity for both of us. It was the sisterly thing for me to do. They follow these five attributes and I'm going to read them to you. They are character, activities and honor, interest and talent, personal development, scholarship and education. 
I used every single one of those points against them because they were not treating me fairly. She doesn't respond. I am now almost done studying abroad and I am still dealing with the situation. I am emailing, contacting, emailing, contacting, and nobody is responding to me. This was not going to continue happening. I wasn't going to let this happen. I wasn't going to let these people treat me unfairly because they knew I didn't have the financial backing to get a lawyer. This is when I decided to get my stepdad involved. And he said, let's sue him.